doors. Doors are pretty important. They can be used to enter places, divide spaces, and prevent unwanted individuals from entering a space. Simple enough. In video games, doors usually perform a similar set of actions. They block off an area visually to prevent you from seeing what's inside, they can act as a loading screen gate, or they can block your progress, forcing you to solve a puzzle or find a key of some kind before you can move forward. So I wanted to see how we could easily add both swinging and sliding doors to Game Builder Garage since there could be tons of applications in different games and levels. Blue Person was taking a stroll one day when he found this big black box with a sign that said treasure painted on it. There's also an orange door, but it's non-functioning. So let's fix that for him. We'll start with our basic door shape. So you'll want to create some kind of wall around the door and then start with a solid object that has the correct dimensions for that pathway. And you'll generally want to make it fairly thin so that it works well. We're going to be switching the axis that we're looking through the game screen on a few times by pressing the X button or clicking on this icon on the top right. My door object is solid, visible, and movable with a connection point of Z positive, Z negative. The first thing we're going to do is create a sort of hinge object to anchor the door. And we'll do that by copying the door object, making it smaller, and then making it non-movable. The primary way we're going to operate a swinging door is with a hinge connector. We'll get a Y hinge connector since that'll rotate it around the Y axis, which is up and down. And we'll connect our hinge object into the hinge node on, and then the hinge node on into our door object. Just connecting them, we've created a swiveling door. If all you wanted were some Western saloon doors, then you could end it here. The next thing you'll want to do is figure out which direction different degrees correspond to on your hinge connector node on. So I tested it here and zero is a good starting position and 90 degrees is a good open position for our purposes. So I'll just keep that in mind for now. Starting position of zero, open door position of 90. Then we'll need something to activate the door opening. We'll use an X button press node on and we'll set it to on press. Then we're gonna add in a flag since I always use flags in my build and we'll connect our button press to turn the flag on. While the flag is on, we'll want to be counting up on a counter. Counter will be set to a range of 0 to 60. I'm using 60 because 60 frames a second means that the door will open completely in one second. You can play with this later on to adjust the speed of the door opening or sliding. We'll then add in a map node on so that we can adjust the counter output into something that the hinge connector can work with. So we'll have an input range of 0 to 60, but our output range will be from 0 to 90, which are the two positions that we want the door to switch between. If we test that out, we'll see that it works perfectly. The door goes from a perfect close to open position in one second. Now to be able to toggle that, we'll add an AND node on and make it so that when the flag is on and the button is pressed, we'll turn the flag off. Then we want to handle that flag off signal. We'll take out a NOT node on and run the flag through it. When the flag is NOT on, we'll want to be counting down closer to that closed door position. It's actually really simple. And a quick aside, if you wanted to make it so that you can only open a door in certain areas or once another criteria is met, like if you've collected a key or if you've pressed a button somewhere, you can just use an AND node on with the button press in place of anywhere you had the button. I'm just replacing the button outputs with this AND node on that has the touch sensor and the button in it, and everything will work exactly the same. Now I'm going back to just a button for the rest of this tutorial video because I don't want the programming screen to get too cluttered. Next, all you have to do is move the hinge into place and your door should be working just fine. Now, one thing you can do if you're having some issues with your door is to add an extra object that is non-solid as a tiny extra hinge. All you would do is connect it to the hinge connector before your actual door object. And what this is going to do is create a small non-physical hinge that might help make the door move a little bit smoother. I made it red so you can see here in the corner that it just helps the door move a little bit easier without running into edge problems. So that's actually it for our hinging door. It was pretty easy. Once we have our basic door logic set up, changing the kind of door is very simple. We're just gonna switch out our hinge connector node on for a slide node on. We'll still use our hinge base object and our door object, and we'll connect them all up in the same exact way and plug in that map output. But this time, instead of zero to 90, all we're gonna do is switch the output range to zero to two. Because as opposed to a degree, with the slide connector, it moves by units, and 90 units would send the door flying into the sky, which might also be fun. But in this case, we want it to only go up by two units, which is just about the height of the player. So now you'll see by doing that quick swap 
Everything works exactly the same, but we've changed the way that the door moves. And the system is really customizable. You can make it so that the counter counts less time, and that will make the door open and close faster. Or if it counts more time, you can make the door open and close slower. And there is no limit to the amount of things that you can create with this timed movement system. Maybe Blue Person should just stop believing things he finds written on walls and signs. I took some of the wall pieces that were left over and created this crazy catapult. All I did was make the counter only count up to five. So this gigantic moat launching catapult completes its full 90 degree rotation in a fraction of a second which launches our player into the sky. 